I would love to see this version of Harry Potter fight Voldemort. For Geekies, this is my review for Imperium, directed and written by Daniel Ragusis. It stars Daniel Radcliffe, Tony Collette, Tracy Letts, Sam Trammell, and Chris Sullivan. This movie is based on a true story and it is about this young FBI analyst who infiltrates a radical white supremacy group. He finds himself stuck in many challenges, one harder than the other, and he has to take himself out of these challenges while sticking to this new identity that he created. I have to tell you right now, I wish people watched this movie for Daniel Radcliffe alone. He is superb in this film. I have never seen the guy being so good on screen. I grew up with the Harry Potters, I love the Harry Potter films, I love him in the Harry Potter films. This is Daniel Radcliffe's greatest role to date. I am still to watch Swiss Army Man, but once I do, I'll tell you if I change my mind. He is so good in this movie, he's a very closed up type of person. He does not hang with anyone, he's always alone at his home, reading a book, taking a bath, having dinner alone, he doesn't talk that much to people. However, he has to put himself in this situation because he forces himself to. He's against everything that these types of people stand for. He's against the very existence of certain beliefs. And with the help of Tony Collette, he decides to embark on this mission to try and take these people down. Now, I have not heard of this story before, and apparently it is based on a book that was also written by the guy who helped write this script. And by all accounts, the movie never has a big movie-like moment. There's nothing in this movie that feels like it was created for the screen alone. And that is good to make it feel realistic, but it can kind of hurt the movie in the end. The problem with this movie mainly is its spacing and what it builds up to. I'm not going to spoil you anything, I never do, but this movie is build up and build up and build up and build up. And by the end of it, you don't feel like it built up to anything. The threat of what these people from the white supremacy group are trying to accomplish never feels real, never feels like it's about to hit, like it's about to go down. And that's because you never really get a sense of what these guys are going for. You never get a sense of what they clearly want to accomplish. There's no concrete mission goal in this movie. Daniel Radcliffe goes through the motions on this group and it's really, really great to have a character study like this like they have in this movie and see meet all these people all of them who have very very different details to each other there's all sorts of people inside this white supremacist group there's family people there's these radical guys who always shave their head and tattoo Nazi signs on their skin and you get a sense that although it's very bad that certain beliefs like this still exist and so do these types of communities you do get a sense that these people are real and they never try to villainize because they are Nazis I like that this movie respects people enough to do that even though I personally am fully against it. Toni Collette, although she has a very small role, I think she was also really good at she land a new whole dimension to this movie as well. Because when she's counteracting with Daniel Radcliffe on screen, they bring so much out of each other, they worked so well together, I wish I could have seen more scenes with these two. The score of this movie is also very haunting, it really helps to build the tension, but as I said before, in the end doesn't feel like the tension built up to anything. Going back to the story a little bit, going back to the story a little bit and talking a little bit about the character study that is featured in this movie towards Daniel Radcliffe's character, as he travels this community, this group, you really get a great evolution of character and of a performance by Daniel Radcliffe. I just can't emphasize enough how good he is in this movie. You really get a very natural, genuine evolution of this man that you see how he is in the beginning and how he transforms along his journey inside this mission. There are parts of this movie that will probably be difficult to watch for some and I will completely understand that. This is not an easy movie to watch. It's not necessarily an enjoyable subject that this movie tells. It's not exactly something that you'll get joy out of. But as a movie it just stands out in the sense of the character study for who Daniel Radcliffe plays in this movie. The showing of the community is great, the showing of the mission is great, the evolution of his character is great, although the story does not really seem like 
like it's going anywhere and by the end it's exactly how you feel it never really led up to anything and that's and that's the most griping part about watching this movie is that apart from Daniel Radcliffe it really just seems like nothing else was needed but I have to give a shout out to Chris Sullivan who I just watched on Stranger Things and he was such a good character then and then he shows up here like a Nazi and I am forced to hate him. All in all, I would recommend this movie if you know of the story, if you've read the book, if you are a big, big, big fan of Daniel Radcliffe. It is a movie that you should watch. It is a movie that would make you aware of the situations that are unfortunately still going on today. And this is not a bad movie. It's just a movie that it doesn't really have a lot of replay value. And because of that, I cannot give it a martini, but I still think that Imperium deserves a C plus. What did you think of Imperium, beautiful geekies? Are you a big, big, big fan of Daniel Radcliffe? Let me know all that in the comments below. And let me know if you've seen both Imperium and Swiss Army Man. Which one is the better performance by Daniel Radcliffe? Yesterday on my Ben-Hur movie review, to which I'll leave a link at the end of this video, I announced the winner of your votes for the Q&A coming in September. And that is Magnificent 7. The clear winner on this one by your votes. And just hashtag in the comments below, Mag. 7 q and I'll leave the hashtag in the description for you guys to check out and ask me any questions you want. Of course, we are going to have a giveaway and guys, I really want you to ask me anything you want. I want you guys to feel like you can ask me anything. Personal questions, weird questions, feel as freaky, as geeky, as magical, as weird as you want. Just ask me anything, so just get right away with it. You can start now or you can start yesterday on my Ben-Hur movie review. But if you are new to the channel and you enjoyed this review and are a fan of Daniel Radcliffe, I am as well, so come join the beautiful geeky community and we can be geeky united. I'm not sure if I have two or one reviews coming this week, but I still have many reviews that I upload this week, so I urge you all to check those out and of course stalk me on the internet through my Facebook, Instagram, my vlog channel or my pop price guide page. Those links are all in the description for you to know what I am up to all the freaking time. Once more, thank you so much for watching guys. I love you all. Stay beautiful. Cheers!